Hi there! Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my space. So, today I'm going to do a little touch up on my guitar. I want to show you how you touch up the wood tone stain and make it look like new again, basically. Which is really cool. Now, if you were going for like a relicking look, this is really awesome because these guitars start to wear down really quickly. There's not like a hard, you know, coat of paint like nitro or poly. And like, think about a Fender guitar with a thick coat of poly on there. Those and with the pick guard, it's really like you know you have to really do some damage on one of those guitars to really mess it up. But with this stain, I don't have much of a pick guard presence here, and with this soft mahogany wood, and with this stain, you know my hand picking on it is starting. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's right there where it's wearing down. There's like a, a dead spot. And it actually looks cool, like it'll wear really nicely. And I'll eventually just let it wear. But I thought it would make a good video just to show you how cool it is. You can just touch this stuff up and it looks like brand new again. So if you're into keeping your guitar perfect, I'm kind of like that. What I do is like when I first get a guitar, I'm sort of obsessed with keeping it like really nice. And after a while, play it a whole bunch. You know, you start noticing normal play wear. I have no issue with that. Little bumps and bruises that happen from walking around the house of the guitar or like when you start playing the guitar out of course it's going to happen in, in those circumstances I usually just accept that as normal wear and I'm okay with it so I think that eventually I'm going to let this go and let it just normally wear I think it's going to be really cool I can already tell that the neck is getting less and less finish on it as time goes on and I'm thinking you know a couple of years from now there's not going to be much finish on this neck and this guitar is just going to keep sounding better and better because I'm beginning to realize that the less amount of finish, the better it sounds to me. I really like the way it sounds. It just resonates. It's alive. It's like the wood's allowed to do its thing as opposed to being just coated, you know, in poly or nitro or whatever. And all those have wonderful sonic benefits. I'm just saying my experience now has made me sort of see the light. And I think that's what the stain uh, advantage is, is that the guitar is just more of itself. And, you know, maybe manufacturers don't do this much because when they're selling guitars, they want to uh, have a finish that's durable that won't get messed up. So this is more kind of like a thing you can do yourself, you know, it's not like a factory thing, it's like a, a DIY thing that I think, or like a uh, boutique builder or something like that, you know, as opposed to a mass-produced guitar. So anyway, I just want to show you real quick. The one I did was the Cherry Flamenco, which ends up looking very similar to an SG or Flying D Faded. It's like this kind of faded age thing. So you start with like a really kind of like the reddest coat that, that it comes with. And you rag on the red and you do two, three coats of that. I think I did three of those. Then a second coat, which is a little darker, I did two of those. Because after a certain point, the guitar will sort of say, I don't want any more of that. Then you get to the third coat which is a little uh, darker even still and a little thinner. I went with I think like four or five coats of that third one. Then finally an aging top top gloss coat and I did like uh, four of those, four coats. So it was a ton of coats and it takes a long time. It took like you know two, two and a half weeks or something to stain this thing because you gotta do it and then just let it sit. So I'm gonna show you how I fix this little glitch and also while I was in here I just bumped it right here I'll go ahead and fix that little dot too. I don't know if you can even see it, but mahogany is really soft wood. So now there's like this little ding here where the paint is, you know, where the finish is, is gone. So I'll fix that too. So I haven't done this yet, so let's see what happens. So I'm going to pull out the stain. Just show you, first of all, whenever I apply stain, I cut out like these little four inch squares of t-shirt. This one might not be quite four inches because I knew it was just gonna be a touch up job. But I think this works better than like Q-tips or anything, a paintbrush or anything like that, and just literally like just roll this up and I'm going to just dab it on there and just back and forth. So I'll start with kind of just cleaning this off, make sure we don't have a bunch of dust, dust embedded in there. I mean this is going to be a really quick job and it's so simple, you don't really need anything. Uh, you could tape off the pick guard, you know, I'm not even going to worry about it because the stains just wipe right off if it touches plastic. Okay, so I'm going to reach in my little bag here. Here's the wood tone stains bag that it came in. And this is the top gloss. As you can see, I used most of it. And it's now just like, oh wait, this is the, yeah, this is the top, top coat uh, gloss. It goes on at the end. It's like an H gloss. There's an, it, I left a little bit in so I'd have a way to touch up, but it's, it's like glue now. It's dried up. Too, not enough in there to keep it going. Okay, so this is 
the second coat, and I've got a lot of that left, and then I've also got third coat left, and this is the darkest one. Um, I'm going to start with this one because it seems like it has the most in left. And you can always buy one of these, you know, like just the one bottle replacement for touch-ups. I think as opposed to, you know, getting the whole the whole kit. And it's nice to have something you can do touch-ups with. Okay, so you could carry this out on the road with you. All right, so I'm going to open it up. I think this stuff smells great. That smells fantastic. Some old crud. Okay, so I've heard other people mention they like the sm the smell, the stain smell. It's nice. Okay, so it doesn't smell it doesn't smell like overly harsh like toxic chemicals or anything. It smells very natural. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take my little thing. I'm going to kind of fold it up into a uh, like a tight little like this, and then I'm just going to dab it on. I'm going to just let it go on like, yeesh. Not much in there. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's, that'll do it. See? And then I'm going to just bring it over here without kicking over my stain, what I have left of it. Right here, here's the guitar. I'm, just, I'm going to move the string out of the way a little bit and just kind of rag it on. that can read it if that reads at all but what I'm gonna do next that was the uh, that was the third the second coat which is you know obviously put a little more on obviously darker than the first but the third the third one is really dark so let's try that to finally finish this off and make it cover the little space I don't know how well it's gonna work uh oh Okay, and that last coat, third base coat. Okay, let's see if I can get anything out of this. Looks like it might be drying up. And you want to shake it up a little bit before you uh, dab it on. If there's even anything left in this one. Okay, it looks like the only one that I have anything left out of is the um, the second coat. So what I'm going to do... Ooh, I may have some of this first one. This first one all gone? I bet that first one is totally gone. Yeah, it's gone. So all I have now... I haven't opened these up in a while and they just kind of dry out over time and I almost used them. Look how much of this there was hardly anything left in there. I just left a little tiny bit thinking I would be able to touch it up but they, it dries up over time. So I luckily have some left in this the second coat. I left enough in there and I'm actually going to now try a uh, to apply it with a q-tip. That might actually work better since there's so little of it. So here we go. Alright, you can even put it into the... Ooh, that came out well. There's still a lot in here. This should do it. And you can build it up over a couple days. See, now I've got it in the cap. I'm going to just take a little, probably should have worn gloves. Take a little, got it on here. And now I'm just going to paint it on. Okay, that actually worked better than the rag. Make sure, I'll go turn the light on. Hold on. Okay, so the rag works better for the initial application, but the touch-up, definitely the Q-tip. So you can kind of paint it on, bulk it up. And I'm probably going to do this few times to build it up 
Now, over here we got this little nick. I'm just going to take this, see, dip it right in here. I got some on the end, and then just right on it. I mean, that is just the coolest. Probably can't see, but it just filled that little dot up, fixed it. I'm going to look around and see if there's any other spot. Got some on the uh, binding. Man, I got binding. I got it on the binding when I was doing it, and that ended up being a lot of work to uh, scrape all that binding off. And you have to be careful because then you scrape into the, uh, the finish and you get little scratches, you know. Okay. I'm doing it again. This is not really the way you do this because typically you rub it on and leave it on for a minute, you know. But since it's just a spot, it seems to react well to this Q tip method. Yeah, that looks really nice. It looks exactly like it's new again. It's just gone. It took a minute. But the Q-tip method is the way to go for the touch-ups. Obviously, the ragging on method is awesome. For um, And you know what? I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to make sure that this bottle, it feels really loose, so I'm going to make sure I don't lose it by um, just taping it up a little, because that touch-up looks really nice. I mean, it looks like brand new again. It's impressive. So it looks like for touch-ups, the best thing to do is just get the cap, put your little, uh, one of these, like, find Fine Q-tips are used for electronics, like cleaning cap stands. That's what these are. I'm just going to kind of paint it on that spot. The ragging is too subtle. You have to build up coats with ragging. I'm just going to carefully, I'm just carefully painting this on. And just kind of trying to make it look natural. It sort of wants to get dark in some spots. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. So wood tone stain, really easy to touch up. You just keep one of your bottles. This is the second coat for me. So this, what I did was I just used the second color, touched it up very carefully. That spot's going to happen again because it's where I where I pick. But I'm just not ready for it to wear out again. I I like the way the finish looks so. I'm happy touching it up. So really easy. Just use one of these. This is the kind that you use to like clean cap stands on, on cassettes. It's like an electronics uh, Q-tip, like longer. And it's a tighter weave up here instead of being fluffy like the ones you put in yours. And uh, I think that's going to work great. Although those might work as well because they're fluffier. I'm just trying to make it look natural. Looks great. Looks exactly like it did when I when I originally did it. Perfect. Thanks again for watching. I highly recommend this wet tone stain. Thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.